Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Erner Barry's Tuesday Morning Market Roundup. Today is Tuesday, May the 23rd. I hope that your day is going well so far. So we are going to start this morning with a focus on eggs. And as you all know, there's never a shortage of input that is provided by our own Karen Rispoli uh, about this exciting egg market of ours. So Karen, what do you have for us this morning? Hey, good morning, Russ. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so it's been a few weeks uh, since we talked about eggs, and there's certainly been some new developments in the marketplace that I thought were worthy of an update. Um, if you've been tuning into these videos, you've likely heard me talk rather extensively about the historic collapse in shell egg prices that we've seen since the start of the year. Um, I won't spend too much time on that since it's been pretty well covered already, but um, just as a, a quick recap, I'm just going to bring up Midwest Large here. You can see that we dropped from a record high of 546 at the tail end of last year, all the way down to 94 cents per dozen um, the week before last. And again, I won't get into all the details since I want to talk more this morning about what's changed and why the market is now rebounding. Um, but the crux of that correction has primarily been two things, which is the absence of the bird flu. We haven't had any outbreaks among layers, knock wood, uh, since December. And poor retail demand due mostly to higher shelf prices. Um, okay, so now for what changed. This is a look at the USDA's weekly shell egg inventory. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to is this massive jump in inventories from the middle of March up through the beginning of May, um, which looks very similar to the downturn that we've seen on, on shell eggs, uh, which should come as no surprise. Um, I've also put up the five-year average here for comparison's sake so that you can see just how unusual it is to see an inventory gain of this size, particularly in such a short period of time. Um, you know, there was one week in here, right about here, where inventories actually jumped up 10% from the week before, um, which is the biggest week over week increase that we had seen since the start of the pandemic, when basically the food service and hospitality industry shut down. Um, and I think that at least in part, it's that jump that caused producers to sort of like hit the panic button and evaluate their inventory positions, what was going on in the, in the marketplace. Um, because for the first time that I can remember in recent years, there was a stretch of about six weeks there where there was literally not a single bid for um, shell eggs moving into the retail sector in, in the spot market. Again, a result mostly of those higher shelf prices. And so suppliers were like, all right, I think it's time to, to reset. Let's you know get this product cleared out. Let's take out whatever older birds we've got lingering um, and get this market back into some better balance. And so that's exactly what, what happened. It's hard to quantify at this point in time um, because export data is about on a two month delay. Um, but just from conversations I had, it sounds like there was a substantial amount of product that moved across the Southern border into Mexico. There was also a massive amount of eggs that were pushed into the breaker. Um, and and you can see that here. This is a look at weekly cases broken. Um, again, these numbers shot up to some of the highest that we've seen since January of 2020. Um, and now at the same time, you know, retailers have finally started to reflect some of these lower prices. You know, we've been kind of seeing the reverse of what happened back in the fourth quarter where they were using eggs as a loss leader and not reflecting the higher prices. Well, over the last few months, they've been very slow to respond to these lower wholesale values. Um, but as you can see here, this is a look at um, advertised retail prices um, for the, the week that ends actually, I think Thursday. Um, and so that number has dropped down to the lowest we've seen in, in quite a while. So consumers are responding favorably, especially after paying as much as five, six dollars a dozen earlier in the year excited to see, you know, something that starts with a one again. And in some cases, you know, we've even hear, heard of some that are below a dollar. Um, so that's tightened up the supply side and generated, you know, spot market buying interest again for shell eggs. Um, but with all of those adjustments that were made, few producers have eggs to spare right now. And those that do are a little bit hesitant to part with them given the strength of their own orders. Um, so that's pushed negotiated trade values back into premium territory. Um, and again, as I said, we started to see the market rebound. Doesn't look very significant here because of the size of the drop, but we've actually seen about like a 25% gain um, in, in just the last week or so. So things are certainly, um, you know, I would say full steady to firm at this at this point. Um, and I will just 
close real quick with an update on our table uh, egg layer situation. We had a new chicken and eggs report come out from the USDA on Friday. Um, and that is this red line right here. Uh, our layer number is back up to 317 million. Um, no surprise, of course, that we're above year ago levels given that the bird flu was spreading you know, at, at that time. But I did bring up the 10 year average as well, um, just to kind of offer some more context. Now, you know, we see year over year population growth. So it stands to reason that, of course, the layer number will continue to, to climb year after year. Um, but it is worth noting that um, the Egg Industry Center had put out a monthly flock projection um, and they were not expecting to see us back to 317 until August. So it looks like it's kind of, you know, ramping up a little bit um, faster than people had expected. So we'll kind of see how that all plays out in the weeks ahead. And thank you, Karen. Uh, always appreciate you keeping us in the know on the egg market and uh, all its buzz. So you just heard uh, Karen speak briefly about the chicken and egg report, and we're going to take that and run with a little bit featuring Matt Bizzardo. And Matt is going to elaborate on that chicken and egg report and what it means specific to the broiler industry. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, uh, Russ. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so I'm going to try and speak to that a little bit try to answer the age-old age question, which came first, the chicken or the egg. In this report, seemingly, the egg comes first, given all of the data that really heavily centers around egg, uh, the egg industry. But there is a tiny little piece of, of chicken industry data here that's, that's very telling. And it, it really does give a good look of future production here. And that's uh, your broiler type pullet chicks has. So this is a supply flock uh, for the chicken industry, the broiler industry uh, specifically. Uh, and this is just a 10 year view here. And this uh, this red line is 2023. So you can see the trend here. And this has not just been with with the uh, the pullet chicks hatch, but this has been with all production, even you know egg sets and and your chicks that are being placed in the farms. The trend has been flat to lower pretty much throughout the entire uh, year to this point. But the bigger thing that I think many people should be focusing on is yeah, it is flat to lower, but it's coming off. It's compared to years of all time high. I mean, you look at 2021 here, these huge spikes in in uh, available supply flock. 2022 started in similar fashion where you just saw this massive spike. And a lot of this production from 2022 kind of contributed to, to uh, a lot of chicken being available as we got into the late summer of last year. And when we saw those values coming off those all time highs. This 2023, lower, but historically still high. So something just to note here when people are looking at, oh, well, if you look at these, these statistics, you're starting to see things are trending lower and what we're going to be doing with that, but still at an elevated rate. Obviously, this these figures come with you know some some questions because just because you might have a large supply flock doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to translate into a lot of chickens actually in the grow houses. Hatchability is still a major concern that people are grappling with. That takes some things out. You know, there are other issues at play that kind of limit things going through the entire value chain. But that is something to note that they, they, the industry is attempting to be, you know, more in balance, but it's still at, you know, when you look at that 10-year chart, it's still on the higher tier of that 10-year that average. So something to note here, you know, going forward into the summer when when things typically when demand patterns start to change and people start to prepare more for the fall when when typically the consumer slows down on that demand. So it's you know just something to note here and, and something we don't bring up a lot, which uh, which I thought was pertinent uh, nowadays. And as probably you all can deduce, I mean, that that higher production had uh, resulted in really high freezer stocks on the chicken side. And of course, in general, lowered prices, uh, those lower prices, much like eggs, are starting to attract attention and movement is much improved. So I'm sure we'll have an update from uh, Karen and Matt in the future. Matt, always appreciate your uh, insight on the chicken side of the world. So that's been Tuesday morning market roundup for May 23rd. I hope that all of you have a great day and thanks for joining us.